My name is Dan Collins, and I'm a professor at Arizona State University. I want to share with you uh, the design for a novel face shield uh, that we've been developing in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as you can see from this initial slide, we have some uh, features that allow for a covering, a cowling that covers the gap between uh, the headband proper and the area that holds the face shield. So here you can see a uh, second piece of plastic that is actually snapped into place that protects the health worker from any sort of aerosols or splatter that might come in over the top of the shield. This is uh, based on feedback we've received from uh, local health care providers and hospitals. So I've got a series of slides here I'd like to run through and uh, share our assembly process. Uh, here you see a standard 3D home printer. This is a printer called an Ender 3 that was purchased for less than $200 for the whole printer. And a roll of the uh, simplest material to use, PLA, polylactic acid, can be purchased for less than $20 a reel. Each reel weighs about a kilogram, uh, which translates to 2.2 pounds. And from that single reel, somewhere between 23 and 25 of these, depending on your settings, uh, uh, headbands can be produced uh, in PLA plastic. This is the support for the lens and the cowling uh, for the face shield proper. Here you see a sheet of PETG plastic uh, still with its protective film. That's why it looks opaque. And the files that we've produced for making simple traces onto the plastic can be downloaded from the site here on the uh, National Institute of Health.gov site. Uh, I've just used a, a Sharpie and traced out the outlines of these um, two pieces that are cut out of the plastic. Um, so here we are cutting it out with a simple pair of scissors and subsequently punching these holes such that um, they will snap over the tangs on the head band assembly that was 3, 3D printed. Um, this handheld hole punch, just like you would find in almost any home office, has about a quarter inch diameter cutting surface and so if you punch two holes side by side, you'll get an elongated hole that fits perfectly over the tang. This slide just simply shows that the material is actually covered with a film, a protective film front and back. And some people uh, can't, <laughs> can't believe that they bought plastic that was supposed to be clear. And in fact, it came and it looks opaque. Well, make sure that you're removing the uh, film from plastic. Once you have the plastic cut out and punched, then you can snap the actual uh, lens uh, starting from the middle hole and then moving across from middle to the outside. And that'll be the best way to actually get a, a stretch that's equivalent on either side because it's quite a tight fit. Another step would be to cut a strip of door insulation, 200 millimeters long, and that gets uh, affixed to the inside of the headband. You can see that here. And this door insulation is great. It's a closed cell uh, PVC sponge tape. And in this case, we're just using something from Home Depot, three quarters of an inch wide and three eighths of an inch deep and uh, using its adhesive properties just to affix it to the inside of that headband. It sticks pretty well. You have to, you may want to have some secondary taping around that to, if, you're, if it's really undergoing a lot of rubbing or abuse. Here are, here's our solution for the elastic headband. It's about a 12 inch piece of elastic just uh, purchased at a fabric store. And then we have uh, 
punched that, or not punched it, but actually cut out slots in the uh, in the elastic material to create an adjustable elastic strap. Here you see a series of punches that can give adjustments for different users, and those holes fit over the hooks in the back of the headband proper. Here's the finished face shield. Uh, the reason that this one, this cowling is still opaque is that the film has not been removed just for the purposes of distinguishing the two parts of the face shield assembly. Now here's the final results. You can see that uh, got really good visibility, comfort from this foam band, ease of adjustment with the elastic band, protection uh, to right up to where the, the hood or um, other kinds of garments, PPE garments, will come down and, and basically create a seal between the cowling and the top of the head. So thanks for your attention. If you uh, have any more, uh, if you have any questions, I can be reached at dan.collins at asu.edu.